Vor dem Weißen Haus wurde der Christbaum Islands neu angezündet. Er war zum Gedenken an die Geiseln zwei Weihnachtsfeste dunkel geblieben. Amerika schmückte sich heute mit gelben Bändern, die zu einem Zeichen der Verbundenheit mit den Geiseln geworden waren und nun ein herzliches Willkommen signalisieren. Die Fackel der Freiheitsstatue wurde zu Ehren der Heimkehrer entzündet. Amerika lässt einen dunklen Albtraum hinter sich. The Reagan Administration. Recapping the hostage story. And there's the Jones family in Detroit. It was the moment the Lopez family had waited for for 14 and a half months. On TV, Marine Sergeant Jimmy Lopez, a free man at last. It wasn't until they saw him a second time, a close-up, that the tears began to flow. her oldest son, Richard. She kept saying, I can't believe it. Family and friends sharing the tears, the joy, and the champagne. The hostage bracelets are off in the home of the Reverend Earl Lee and his wife, Hazel. And hundreds more are coming off in Pasadena, California, where the fate of son Gary Lee had become a community concern. And finally, cause for community relief. There he is right there. And last night, celebration in the Lee home as Gary Lee walked into view on television pictures from Algiers and Frankfurt. His beard longer, his body thinner, said his parents, but looking good. In Sherman Oaks, California, Deborah Plotkin Hello. talked with her husband, Jerry, a businessman. Jerry? The parents of the embassy vice consul, Donald Cook, talked with their son from their living room in Memphis. Mr. Cook's a professor, and at one point he sounded like one. Right now. You look great on TV. We've seen you. We've been watching every step of the way, kid. We know exactly what you did, all the way from the Tehran airport right to where you are right now. The mother of embassy guard Stephen Kirtley scanned the screen at a television studio in Little Rock, Arkansas, looking for her 22-year-old son. I think that's, that's him. That's him. The anchorman called her three daughters to uh, comfort her. That's him. Later at home, she actually spoke and listened to her son. All right, I love you. I love you, son. Be good. All right, bye-bye. Bye. There was no opportunity planned for the 50 men and two women to meet with reporters in West Germany, but Martha Teichner spoke with two of the hostages. What did you do on the plane when you first got on? <laughs> there were microphones present earlier during a brief stopover in Algiers. How are you feeling? Fine. Great now. What are you going to do when you get home? <laughs> the one thing I'd like to say right now to everybody back home is you can never imagine how much the letters and your prayers and your support through all of this have meant to us. We weren't able to write to you or communicate with you. But only the Lord knows how much it helped. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. When my pops escape at home, when my music's playing home.